What's this 900? They're all everybody's all excited. You just, you also said. Are you kidding me? The 900 is. Uh, I would never made that. Thank you. Thank you. This is the best day of my life. I swear to God. But then you bring in Satan into this, into the the branding and all that. You were a skateboarder in the 90s. Uh, skated with, uh, they call him the Birdman. Is it Tony so, Hawk? Uh, hey, what's up? I'm Tony Hawk, and today. This is the day. The day. Assalamu alaikum, Zayn. How you doing, my brother? Alhamdulillah, Eddie. How's it going, brother? Good. Alhamdulillah. So we were talking a little bit about the the glasses. Yes. Yes. So t tell us, uh, fill us in on why you prefer to wear the glasses. Uh, to be quite honest, I'm a, uh, I'm a technical by, a guy by trade. Um, uh -huh. Went to computer science in 2002. Uh, however, prior to that, my life in skateboarding was sort of an, an anonymous type of lifestyle. It was better to be anonymous at that point. Yeah. Um, skateboarding in the you know late 80s, early 90s was sort of a... Uh, sort of rebellious activity and it was sort of like punk rock I guess that type of genre of lifestyle so people looked uh, upon us a little strangely um, so at those those points we had a lot of run-ins with security guards and things so it became habitual to sort of not reveal your name in a certain way but nowadays we all know with these new Netflix things exposing what's happening on uh, uh, with social media taking all your data it's sort of just a privacy thing it's sort of just a preference um, not hiding myself from other people. I, w I wouldn't want to do that, but I mean, uh, you know, your image is getting scanned and things like that. It's, uh, mm. you know, we're all, we're all sort of, I, I like what you said. I mean, keeping your family safe, not putting in this day and age, people are just, you know, putting everything online, but you also avoid, uh, having your children and your family online. I mean, you, you have a lot of even, c uh, celebrities who are uh, up to that. They, they don't allow their kids and the family a lot do but you have also you know many that don't so you prefer and that's i think safer route i mean protect it is i mean e e e i'm not i'm not i'm not trying to fall into the trap of doing selfies all the time and becoming so, some vain glory person right which yeah. is again i'm uh, i'm a type of guy as a, a skateboarder like i said growing up we were sort of anti-mainstream at that mm -hmm. point so this sort of mindset is still in my head where i see a lot of people playing on the phones, playing on the tablets and playing, 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 entertaining themselves and staring at other people's lives. You know what I mean? It becomes, it's sometimes we have to use the computer as a tool and not a toy, right? Mm -hmm. It's not always a play toy. Um, and to make that distinction, I think is, is clear. There, there has to be a point where, you know, taking selfies of yourself, you have to reflect on that in a way where yeah. um, it's not very uh, productive in a way, right? So. Did the Dean play any part of that? Because you do have, obviously, in the Dean, you have the evil eye, you have Hassad, you have these things. That Did that concern you at the same time? It did, actually. From my early days in Islam here, so 10 years ago, I was hearing, you know, some brothers, they were mentioning uh, during during Ramadan, during Eid, uh, some brothers don't like their picture taken, so be careful of that. And uh, I heard a couple lectures as well about people discussing, you know, the pros and cons of taking pictures of yourself and whether... Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would 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 engage in this type of behavior, right? Now, mm -hmm. some people keep it for for remembrance or memoirs, and some people are doing it really just for the likes and the uh, the fan base, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? There's no real purpose other than they want gratification in a way, right? They're they're yeah. lusting after that that uh, that like or that comment or something, right? And and I I don't follow that trend. I don't I don't need that type of yeah. uh, admiration right so yeah, it's a good reminder for all of us yeah, and sure. uh, and tell sure. us so you were you were skating with the likes uh you were a skateboarder in the 90s uh skated with uh they call him the Birdman. is it tony it's, hawk uh, tony hawk the Birdman. yeah he used to do demos uh all around before he was really famous for his video games and his uh you know the 900 and all the things he's done he has done quite a bit for skateboarding obviously as an ambassador uh, but he's just a regular guy back in the 90s. He wasn't famous where we would attack him. It was a, a roller rink in, uh, you know, in the Toronto area where he would do demonstrations. And we went there and, yeah, we met Tony Hawk face to face and a bunch of other uh, big names back then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, alhamdulillah. It, it was a, a tight knit circle back there. So to speak. At, what, at what age did you start skateboarding? I started skateboarding in, 
at the age of 12, I believe, was my first mm -hmm. board. Uh, first yeah. professional board, though, was, uh, I think, uh, 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. So it's been quite a run, right? The kids at the skate park still ask me today. It's uh, have that younger look. So how long have you been skating? And, I, you know, I'm saying, you know, 30 years, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so is he like, is Tony Hawk, for those that don't know, is he like the Michael Jordan, LeBron James of skateboarding? Exactly. He's the... You know, when you say skateboarding, uh, extreme sports, he's the spokesman nowadays for skateboarding, right? So mm -hmm. I think everybody who's 40 and under knows who Tony Hawk is for sure. Um, the video game is one of the most worldwide selling video games. He just re-released another one, and uh, he's always in the limelight for something, right? Uh, I, I want you to, uh, you shared something with us, and I want you to take us through this. We're going to go through this video together. Yeah. We're going to help you educate us a little bit on this. And there's one part of it that actually caught my attention. Never before in history competition have we seen a 900. 9, 9, 9. 900. 900. Oh. You guys want to see the 900? What's this 900? They're all, everybody's all excited. And you just, you also said it, the 900. The 900 is, uh, it's, it's. It's in terms of the degrees of the spin. So a 360 is a one circle, a 720 is two circles, and a 900 is two and a half circles. So mm -hmm. he did two and a half rotations in the air. And uh, before that, you know, the 720 was the, uh, was the big move, and the 900 had never been done. And that was the first time the 900 had been done, so it was a huge thing. So that was like spinning three times? Two, two and a half times. Two and a half? Yeah. Since since uh, a few years ago, they've they've progressed and they've they've done the three rotations. So the 900 is is two and a half rotations on the skateboard in the air. Someone's and gotten three. So he did two and a half. Someone's gotten to three. Someone's gotten to three, and there's a 13 year old who did three and a half. I think so. He did like a 1440. It's called right. So it's it's wow. it's going. It's progressing rapidly at this point where kids are, are playing the video games and they have that sort of edge that they can visualize yeah. the the trick. And as a martial artist yourself, I, I know we do a lot of thinking uh -huh. and preparation prior to, um, you know, entering a match or entering a contest. We're, we're visualizing what we're going to do based on uh, the opponent and his uh, the tape or something that we watch. Right. So, yeah. Let's keep going through this. I think either going to make it or kill himself trying. 900 with him is So this is Tony Hawk. Deep. This is him. Trying it so many this times. Is him, uh, this seems to be him quite quite a few years ago. But actually, this was X Games, I believe, 2001 is when he when he made this happen, right? When he actually landed it and rolled away. Um, yeah, so I think he had some time. Obviously, I think he was practicing it behind the scenes before this uh -huh. competition. However, uh, obviously, it's 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 hit or miss. It's you, you go for it or you're you're gonna you know you're gonna be laying at the bottom of the ramp. And he did it. So here he missed. He, he, he didn't missed make it. it. Yeah, he, he missed, missed it. it. Yeah, but he got. To... So these these are all other celebrity skateboarders you're seeing. Where is this after. in California? Is that is that this like is... the, the the mecca of skateboarding? Yeah, I think yeah, I think they're in San Diego, which is the uh, quote mecca of skateboarding. So you see here, they're sort of doing some like it looks like uh, almost magic on the guy. They're they're okay. Th they're, they're trying to give him the Holy Spirit or something, but most of them are not religious, so I don't really understand that, right? So uh -huh. I think it's more of a showmanship type of thing that they're doing right now. So yeah, yeah that, that's the interesting part. Like they're trying to do some voodoo on him or something. Right, so they're doing yeah. voodoo. <laughs> yeah. Right. Look, look, yeah, you see it. Look. Well, yeah, he's just, you know, it takes a lot out of you when you're slamming and, and you know, you're, you're trying this. It's it's a lot of effort. So I, I, I do understand that he's... he's so uh, he got he's, it now. I, I think he tries it right here and he ends up getting it. Yeah, and then he, they go wild and there's a little speech. And yeah, yeah, there it is after the aftermath. So he's a big influence. I mean, everybody's favorite skater. He's the, uh, you know, the sort of the unwritten sort of uh, ambassador, president, so to speak, so of skateboarding, right? Uh huh. So this is the part now, right? Where where he says, "Thank you. This is the best day of my life. I swear to God." Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. I seen that some time after it happened, and then you know, I I, I realized he said, "I I swear the God," right? And I, I've heard other skaters say this in, on. Uh, did he Did uh, he say, "I swear to God"? 
No, he said, I swear the God, which is, is strange. I haven't heard this. this Wait, hold on. Hold on. Is that what he said? Let, let me back that up. Hold on. I swear to God. Yeah, I don't know if it's just like uh, like his accent. It's hard to make totally make out. I swear that I. So go ahead. So what do you think? What do you? What is your analysis? Either way, if he's saying, uh, you know, it's the best day of my life. I, I, I swear to God. I mean, a lot of people use this casually, um, you know, just to to sort of uh, emphasize their point, right? Mm -hmm. I swear to God, they're not religious, but when you ask them about it, it's. Uh, they, they're not religious. It's just even Joe Rogan. We see Joe Rogan do it time and time again. Yeah. Or when they're doing a uh, um, a UFC fight. Oh my God, he's knocked out. And, and we know these guys are sort of proclaimed atheists or deists or something like this, right? So yeah. I, I thought it was strange, and uh, so I did a little back checking and found out, you know, found out, you know, what about Tony's religion? What what are people saying about him? And so what, what it came down to was it seemed like he was an atheist and in most of the places it's mentioning he's an atheist and I do recall prior to you know it may be buried on the internet somewhere but a uh, interview with him mentioning that he he believes in you know something that isn't religion right so there's all these different methods that people want to say they don't believe in God and make it sort of politically correct where it doesn't really offend anyone which is good when you're a big brand like like Tony, right? So mm -hmm. you don't want to offend anybody. But you you have because you grew up skateboarding, you you know the industry, you know the people, you know what it's all about from the skateboarding, but also the lifestyle that goes with it. So when you have a lot of youth coming up and many parents, they're just oblivious to a lot of these things. So we want to get the inside scoop mm -hmm. of skateboarding and the lifestyle. So let's talk about that. You mentioned that the majority, is it true, of skateboarders are atheists? Uh, would you, would you I, I say? Would, I would say the higher up on the uh, totem pole you go, that it would be this. Would this I mean, is, when, is this basically, this is off your experience of skateboarding for all these years and being around the, the skateboarders? and. Yeah, I mean, in, in general, it's sort of... Uh, it's a, a counterculture. Skateboarding is a sub counterculture, as they call it, right? Um, like, like the kids who are skateboarders, I wouldn't say necessarily every kid that's a skateboarder is an atheist, but um, I would say the higher you go up the totem pole of the industry, you'll find people become more distant from from God or religion or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what the significance of the, that ratio is, but. Uh, yeah, in, in general, what you see is more of a devil worshiping side of that, the branding side yeah. of skateboarding, right? So the, the higher ups are the ones who make the decisions on what graphics are going to be on the board. You know, how are we going to dress this season when they do their their clothing lines? You know, what 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 symbolism is going to be on the shirts? This is all drafted in big comp distribution companies that have an arts department and things like that, which is a very tight knit family. Of people around my age and your age who grew up in the 80s and 90s who ended up inheriting the whole skateboarding industry right yeah. or or uh, being part of the absolute elite part of the skateboard industry so again out of san diego pretty much everything comes out of uh, out of that area with with regards to skateboarding yeah so now that's interesting because in much of the the uh, the logos and you'll see like the satanic looking emblems and that uh, but then uh, and ha have you seen people going down that route of because why that's the question why is it all over uh the skull and bones and these kind of emblems why are they in the the uh paraphernalia that they sell and their logos why do you think that is I think because in the, in the early times of skateboarding, it was surfers and rejects, basically. These are these are society's rejects, and society's rejects were attracted to a, a lifestyle of sort of degeneracy, sort yeah. of, right? So punk rock and alcohol and womenizing and everything that goes along with that, living dirty, uh, you know, eating dirty, all of the above. So the skull and crossbones became something recognizable in the 80s, which is sort of uh, synonymous with maybe uh, you know the heavy metal days as well. That sort of is synonymous with that too, with the Pentagram and you know Metallica and those types of bands. So that that sort of fuses with skateboarding. So punk and metal it, it has subgenres within skateboarding as well. So you'll have this 
hip hop class of skateboarder. You'll have a punk rock class, an alternative class. So there's all these different fused uh, appeals that you can brand to these different subgenres as well, right? So, but yes, if you walk into any skate shop and you're 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 a parent and you know the difference between something of a lewd graphic and something that is you know funny versus something which is satanic, right? You can look up on the wall and there'll be 60 different skateboards and you'll see 10 of them have some sort of skull skull and crossbones or very openly satanic stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Which uh, maybe we could talk further about. Yeah, so if you mention, um, so because I, I really, I don't believe that anybody is born an atheist uh, or even somebody who goes into this kind of lifestyle you kind of just have to because your conscience is there and your fitra your innate nature to want to worship something so then you got to kind of mask that so people just you know uh try to cover up that natural belief uh but then you bring in satan into this into the the branding and all that but if then you know i've talked and spoken to a lot of people and this is what convinced them that there is a god is that you know if there's a devil if there is and you see all this evil that's happening in the world there has to be a a God, a creator. So it's just interesting that they, that now even in what you would think is innocent, my child or my, you know, is coming up with the skateboarding parents and we just people in general have to be careful, would you say, you know, because, okay, it's one thing you're skateboarding in the backyard, but now if you really get into the group culture and the skateboarding culture, it could be very dangerous, would you say? I'd say it depends. Like I said, there's 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 bad apples everywhere. Yeah. Right. But I mean, if, if you have a good group of friends, which my, my son, we go to the skate park like almost every day. It's actually snowing up here in Canada now. So uh, I think the sea, the skate season is over. But uh, we sort of pick and choose the nice kids. We find the kids that have decent habits and we, we try to stick with them. And the ones that don't, we try to give them a little bit of a good influence. We try to pump them up a bit. We know yeah. that they're coming from broken homes and strange environments and that's what it comes down to with with parents is you're sending your kid to an environment whether it's a baseball field a hockey rink or uh you know the mats in a gym uh the, the skate park you have to sort of guide your kid before you send them in there and know that like this environment has certain aspects and terrains that i have to for i have to know myself as a parent what's really going on in there right yeah what kind of music is associated with skateboarding are these kids swearing every five seconds how is this going to affect my child these are questions questions uh i see a lot of pair parents at the skate park and i'm skating around you know it gives me an excuse as a 40 year old guy to run around right so they, they normally sit there and they're just playing on their phones right and i get to the point where it's like you know this isn't a a phone playing you should be watching your kid. You should yeah. be paying attention to your kid. You should be showing your kid that you care about this hobby and you're not just staring at your phone like a, a drone, right? Yeah. And it's not a good influence to me in an active space for people to be being doing something like playing on the phone, with, which is very, uh, it's harming to be quite, to be quite yeah. frank, right? It's so, not progressive or creative. It's very... Uh, so, so lazy it's lax so not necessarily that skateboarding is something bad but now if you get deeper into the culture it, it can be yes. it could be something that could be dangerous right so this is the sort of disclaimer to parents is yeah your kid is going to read certain magazines or watch certain channels on youtube okay, okay. so we're talking yes. about that's when you get into the literature because they got their websites literature and the ph ph philosophy yolo you only live once YOLO. yeah <laughs> exactly so i mean it's the sort of throw your throw up your horns type of thing. I don't like to do the symbol with my hand, and I don't recommend anyone really doing that symbol out of fun or otherwise. But this is sort of the thing. You're you're, you're throwing your body around. You're a skateboarder. Obviously, you know you have to look at what the sport is and see it for what it is. It's people. It's grown men throwing themselves down huge flights of stairs, and you know landing on solid concrete. Like even football players. At least you have a little padding when you're hitting the ground, right? Yeah. And on a football field, it's uh, it, it takes a toll on you. You're going to hit your head. There's all these other things. And at the same time, it's a huge environment of an eclectic group of, of people. So you have to know your friends. The parents, you should meet those friends. You should sit and talk with them. You should find out, even talk to the parents. I talk to the parents at the skate park to see who, who how is this kid being raised, for example. And it gives me a chance to talk to them about how why my kid is so well behaved or why 
why I'm here paying attention to my kid all the time so so diligently, right? Um, so it gives people a chance and parents, especially during this whole uh, pandemic thing, we we should be going outside and, and meeting each other. This should never ha- this should never stop. To be quite honest, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I like to meet and have an excuse to meet other parents, and it seems as a culture, as a as humanity nowadays, where we're divided to the point where, you know, I used to help old ladies as a child just cross the road and that type of mentality saying please and thank you and basic manners is, is seemingly disappearing and, and that comes from in the home. So we even try to instill some of those please and thank yous to kids at the skate park just to give them, it's their habit that they're swearing and they're rude and things like that. So you have to show them another habit, a habitual way of life that will clean them of that because they have to you have to practice these good deeds and these good manners to to actually have them right it just it's not going to come if your home is broken and your mom and dad are swearing and i know that's a lot of the cases for these kids who are running to skateboarding because it's you can be a very aggressive person like i was as a child a hyperactive kid an adhd uh, affected kid or even people with disabilities are skateboarding with with no legs some of these people so it's very open to anybody um but we we still have to be uh uh, teachers Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, even our our children are teachers for other kids when we send our kids to public school and you're expecting your kid to come home shiny like a a diamond you don't know you've sent your kid to a environment where there's 99 percent of bad manners how Mm -hmm. do you expect what what logic are are we using to say if we send our kid to the garbage dump that he's not going to come home smelling like garbage right this is uh this is crazy this is illogical this we have to we are pretending Mm-hmm. as Muslims, that this is safe to send our kids to certain environments and they're not going to come back affected, even on the computer, even on those certain channels that we watch. It's going to affect us because it's going to become a habit that we're used to and then we're just going to emulate that either good or bad behavior, right? Mm-hmm. So, inshallah, this is every day is a, a test for the believer. You're going to run into people and you should take advantage of those tests, mm-hmm. no matter how small it is, to get a, a little bit of goodness across to someone. Yeah. Even if you're not, I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect at all. I have a lot, a lot of shortcomings. But when we look at the X-ray vision into other people's homes, trust me, they have much more problems than we. Even if we're the worst Muslim, Alhamdulillah, we have Islam. Mm. We can say one ayah and help someone, and we can even just talk to them about the oneness of the Creator. Right? Mm-hmm. This is very powerful to some people because they never hear it all day long. Mm-hmm. Wow, so, so you said some words. You said Alhamdulillah, which means all praise to the Creator of the heavens and earth in Arabic Allah. You said Islam. So you actually, for people who are tuning in and wondering, is he Muslim? You just gave it away. Uh, right. <laughs> you are. You, you, when did you accept Islam? And then for those who are skateboarding fanatics and now you go to the competitions and if you're a Muslim now, you're on that pure oneness, that pure monotheism. And then you got somebody doing this voodoo stuff, you know. You see how that creeps in the shirk, you know, the the paganism, the polytheism, you know, these kind of things that, you know, we have to really be due diligent, even in skateboarding. You see you see when they were coming around and doing this good luck charm, all this stuff. Right. <laughs> this, this this is something that Islam came to uh, eradicate and educate us against that. So uh, w- when did you accept Islam? And then is was this in this video that we saw? Was did you see other forms of shirk or any uh, other things like this that were? Uh, that parents should be aware of or just Muslims in general who are skateboarding uh, For the Muslims out there. I know uh, Dubai did some big stuff They did an X Games in Dubai quite some time ago, right? So uh, it's been established there. There's actually a uh, Charity in Afghanistan, which to me I have other opinions, but I'll, I'll let I'll let you know there's a, it's called Skatistan where they're they've set up a skate parks in in different places in Kabul in uh, in the big cities in Afghanistan, and they're allowing kids a mode of expression in these, you know, places which are war torn, to for the children to express themselves and to be together with other children, right? So yeah. it, it it has a good point, and to me it has a different point because there's a lot of girls who are in there, and there's a lot of mixing going on in there, and that's mm-hmm. a different topic. But I mean, overall. Uh, helping kids in any method and I, I believe skateboarding is a good mode of expression but you still the disclaimer is still there of be careful of the subcultures that the are sub-culture. involved in in skateboarding there's sub subcultures and there's open satanism, sa- satan practices on one side which is obvious 
is very obvious. So just be aware of that and don't get sucked into that. Find your friends who are the good ones. You guys, uh, like, like the Muslim has an unfair advantage actually in skateboarding, right? They have a, the Muslim has an unfair advantage in all sports, to be quite honest, as we see with Habib, as we see with other great champions who are Muslims. What's, what's their advantage? One, they have the power of the creator of their, on their side. Two, they don't do any of these weekend warrior type of, of a- antics after they win. You know, after they win, they have a hamburger. They don't go to the nightclub and, and you know, tear it down all night, right? This is yeah. not something we want to do. So if we want to be Olympic level skateboarders or Olympic level uh, jujitsu practitioners or et cetera, et cetera, just not drinking, just not playing that entertainment game, filling that void of, you know, what's what am I going to do on the weekend with? Why don't you push a little further than your competitor and keep working out that weekend or practice more that weekend? And trust me, you'll see in a year, two years, three years, you, the, the people you were growing up with who sort of subscribe to that other type of life, they're going to be falling behind. There's mm-hmm. no way you can say they're not, right? Because... Mm-hmm. It takes a toll. If you're an athlete, you have to behave like an athlete. If you're a professional football player versus a professional football player who's an alcoholic on the weekend or a, you know, addicted to certain vices, then you're not going to turn out as well as the Muslims. So all the Muslims out there, stay on the Dean and you can become greater than anyone because you don't have all those things pulling you down and wasting your time. Truly. I mean, we all watch a show now and again and watch a movie and this and that and burn off some steam but i mean academically we can move ahead faster and this is all revolves around the dean and how easy the dean actually is and we overcomplicate it right mm-hmm. and we're drawn to those those things when you're a college student university student someone in a workplace you're in an environment you have to be aware of what's around you right you have to put up a force field of dean and be aware of what's going to be in that environment. Even college and university, we know a lot of people go and they come back and it's uh, there's a new person at your door right after three years. He's been programmed. He's been normalized. He's been he's been taken by shaitan, really. Right? He's mm-hmm. been taken by the devil and temptation has overwhelmed him and he didn't have sort of the support mechanisms that, or, or he didn't have the the map of the terrain, which I'm giving people now. If I go on a vacation somewhere, if I go to Chicago, I've never been to Chicago. I'm going to call Eddie and say, Eddie, give me a map of this place so I can navigate around here without going anywhere I shouldn't go, right? So this is the same with life. If we've had certain experiences, we have to tell people. I have to give my brother something that I would want for myself, and I would want that sort of cheat sheet to whatever endeavor I was participating in, that I wouldn't fall into any traps on the way, right? So these are uh, sort of little little anal- analogies, hopefully some people are catching on to, but they're very useful. And, and there, there's a few analogies I use in life. And one is when you see a group of a lot of people doing something in one time, right? And before you jump in the circle of all those people, critically think for a second, say, what's going on there? What's the benefit? What's the harm? You know, let's take, for example, you see a circle of a thousand people smoking cigarettes, right? And you're an outsider and you're like, hey, um, kind of looks normal to me, right? Um, one of those thousand people must have looked into what they're doing, right? One of those thousand people must, you know, so I, I should go join them. That's how most people are behave nowadays. They just they hear something so many times and they just mm-hmm. jump in there, right? Yeah. You have to do your research, no matter what it is. If you're going to this college, do some research on the college. Do some research on the environment around there. How many nightclubs are there? You know, how many murders happen there or something, you know? So, so you have to take take heed, you know what I mean? You have to be alert nowadays. You can't just walk around with your head staring at the ground and think you're going to go anywhere, right? You have to be alert of the hockey players if you're going to get into hockey, jujitsu. Are they playing music all day long in the, in the, in the dojo, right? Like, is it, this affects you, right? I, my kid was in jiu-jitsu recently. I had to pull him out because the teacher, who was very experienced and very good, I liked him, um, played the same tape on loop every time, and it was, it was hypnotizing even me, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, right? So I, I know they put it on to keep the kids concentrated. Or there's some, some wisdom behind it, but, I mean, I, I couldn't handle it myself, mm-hmm. so I had to get out of there. Yeah. Sad, right? Rich, solid points, man. Solid advice. 
And I'll do that. Be before we um, conclude, tell us would you, if you had the opportunity to talk with someone again like Tony Hawk, who's now up there in age, he can see that. Is he also becoming now for the new generation that are coming up? Like people now are forgetting who Michael Jack. I mean Michael Jordan. Who like you start to get uh, new. The new generation comes in, and now you got the what you said he was doing the 900. You got kids now doing the 14. What 40? So right. he's got up in age, and I'm sure he sees people around him that have died. You know, uh, right. it, now to get him to think. You know, purpose of life. Why am I here? What am I living for? You know, where am I going when I die? What what kind of things uh, would he? Because you obviously got turned out to Islam. Submission to the creator, not the creation, you, you know, and this is your way of thinking now is formulated by uh, this way of life. So if you would get a chance to talk to Tony Hawk, uh, what would you like to what would you tell him? I would say that obviously we're all getting old in age, right? And we don't know when when the time is going to come, whether it's an accident from extreme sports or whether it's walking down the street and, you know, it's your time and your heart goes. And at this time, currently in skateboarding, some of the legends, a lot of the legends and filmers and some of the, uh, you know, the guys who work in the behind the scenes of skateboarding, yeah, they're, they're dying. Tony's going to funerals probably every year. He's going to bury one of his friends. And I don't know what the, the proceedings are like, um, but when you, you know, we're told as Muslims, you know, reflect on the afterlife. And if you, to humble yourself, go and visit the grave. Go and visit the grave and look at the ground and, and contemplate. You're going to be in there, right? One way or the other, you're going to be in there. And another thing for someone who doesn't have a lot of um, Islamic education or hasn't had time to read Quran or Hadith or even the Bible or, or any of these, uh, these books, I would say, like Tony, you should maybe... He, maybe he's averse to, to reading those those things right so the fact is before you were alive right to tony hawk before you were here on this planet you weren't here right and then you don't remember being a baby but now you're grown up right so before you were you were nothing right then you became something that you had consciousness then you're going to die and you're going to be nothing again then you're going to be revived again and you're going to have consciousness so to say that's impossible would be to say you deny your own existence now, right? Because you were nothing before. We can agree on that. We, we weren't a thought before we were born, right? Then we became the baby that needed to be helped, etc. Then you're going to become old and you're going to need to be helped. Whether you're a billionaire, a, a multimillionaire, someone may be, you know, changing your diapers in a few years, right? And it's time to think before that time comes. And to reflect on the grave you're burying people every day remember you were nothing so a lot of people say man when we die we're just going to become it's blackness you know the dream mm -hmm. is over but it's it's another analogy is when you when you're dreaming and you wake up and you felt like that was real right it's the same thing when you die you're going to just go to sleep into a dream state you're going to wake up in the grave and depending on how you were as a human being here on earth and the religion you follow and the truth that you followed and the creator that you followed, then you will be judged accordingly, even in the grave. So I, I wish him the best. I can't say he's not an intellectual man. So the intellectual side is there. And it just comes down to make an effort. Know the people who are around you. Know, know that one third of this entire planet is Muslim. And, and you do business in Muslim countries, for sure, right? Your products are in Muslim countries. Like we know sex sells. We know the skull and crossbone cells and stuff. And it's just sort of a trend maybe in skateboarding. Maybe they don't even contemplate this, right? So my message to Tony is get to know a Muslim. Go into a masjid. Wear, wear a mask. No one's going to recognize you. Nobody wants to take your picture in the masjid and expose you that you're coming to, you know, uh, learn about Islam or something, right? It's like do your due diligence on the side. Do a little secret project. Do what you can do, but but learn. Learning is good. Learning about the afterlife is good. And the key conditions of being a Muslim are two simple things. You believe in one God, right? You believe in one creator. You believe that that creator that created the sun and the moon and the universe and the stars that we see at night was not a man, right? Very simple. It's some superhuman being that you can't even fathom. And that one day you're going to be in the afterlife. These are two simple conditions. I know there's, there's more conditions to being Muslim, but 
for someone who wants to know, like Tony, to believe in the Creator and to believe that after you die, you will be resurrected and judged is something to start on, right? We have to start there. Beautiful. Tony. Thank you. And this is coming from a veteran of the skate boarding sport uh, skateboarding for almost uh, over, over 30 years now 30 years plus now Eddie. 30 years uh, plus so yeah, we, we yeah. getting the, we're getting the message to tony hawk i want to thank you for sharing that Inshallah. with us giving some great points and things for people to reflect and ponder over thank you so much next time we're gonna to have to get you back to get your act your actual story inshallah inshallah yeah anytime Eddie. anytime i know you're a busy man everyone's busy but uh, I, I would like that, inshallah. There's a lot of points I would like to make to some newcomers coming to Islam and, and the transition and the things that you go through. And yeah. um, it's always a good boost sometimes for other brothers to uh, to, to hear something from a revert, right? Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. From my experience. And my, my son also wanted to uh, tell you guys Ayatul Kursi, but mm -hmm. uh, he's in the other room. Yeah. So maybe next time we can meet my son as well. So sounds good. Inshallah. Thank you, Zayn. It's very nice okay. talking with you. Zulak Lahai. You too, brother. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And if you like this episode of the Dean Show, like this video, share this video far and wide, and support us on our Patreon page so we can continue this work. Thank you for tuning in. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Subscribe right now.